Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Hi, friends. Hello. My name is Kelly, and I am a people pleaser. Right? Is this not People Pleasers Anonymous? Am I in the wrong meeting? Because I was sure that's where. No. Today we are going to talk about purpose. And for a lot of my life, I thought that my purpose was to keep everybody happy. That didn't work. But in the last few years, I have been on a journey to discover what my true purpose is. But in keeping with the people pleaser theme, I feel compelled to tell a joke because Pastor Cataline has gotten you all used to hearing a joke at the beginning and I don't want to disappoint you. So here goes Sunday school joke for you. How does Joseph from the Old Testament make his coffee? Hebrews it. Get it? Hebrew, Hebrews, you know. Okay, didn't like that one. Here's another one. What is the pirate's favorite Bible story? Noah and the Ark. (laughs) You guys are going to be so happy to get Catalina back next week because obviously my purpose is not to be a comedian. So how do we discover our purpose? Well, let's look at the definition of purpose. Purpose, as defined by Webster, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. The question we've been asking the last couple of weeks is, what on earth am I here for? And another way to ask that is, what is my purpose? Why was I created? And that's a really important question for us to ask. How we answer that question will determine how we spend our lives. So how do we find the answer? The reason for which something is created. Now, my dad likes to create things. He is kind of, he's always finding new ways to do something. And he's basically a scientist and inventor at heart. And just as an example, I want to share with you a screenshot from a YouTube video that he sent me this week with the email subject next summer's project. That is a human catapult. Dad, I know you're watching. My children are not getting in that bucket. Just want you to know. So you get the idea. He likes to make things. A couple years ago, I was up at my parents' lake home and there was this big metal, scary, like rake-like contraption next to the shoreline. And I said, Dad, what is that? He said, ooh, that is my latest invention. I attach it to the boat and I drive it off, just off the shoreline in circles and it pulls up all the weeds. I was like, huh, I never would have guessed that that is the purpose for which that thing was made. But after talking to its creator, I realized that it had a very good purpose It makes a nice sandy swimming area, which I enjoy a lot. So um, if we want to know our purpose, we best ask our creator. So let's start with the big picture look at purpose. What purpose do we all share? What purpose applies to all of us? Let's start at the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and 28. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. We were created in God's image. Our purpose lies in that truth. And no matter how young, how old, where a person lives in the world, when in history a person lived, 
that person's abilities or their disabilities. From the moment of conception in their mother's womb, every person who ever lived is immeasurably valuable. Our purpose is to reflect God's image to the world. But how do we do that? Jesus tells us in Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Which is basically like, what's the most important thing for us to do? And his reply is, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. When we love, we are reflecting God's image and we are living out his purpose. And one of the greatest ways that we can love others is shown to us in Jesus' last words to his disciples before he ascended into heaven after he was resurrected. And it is known as the Great Commission. And I just want to read that. We're reading some very familiar verses today. But when we're talking about our purpose, like no wonder they're familiar because they talk about our purpose. So Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I love how that ends with the promise that he'll be with us. We are all given the purpose of helping others to know God to find freedom, discover purpose, and influence their world. And that is why every single Sunday here at Influence, you're gonna hear that from us. We can't help but tell people about the God who created them with a purpose. So that's big picture purpose, applies to everyone kind of purpose. But what about you specifically? How do you know your special, nuanced expression of God's image that you were created to reflect to the world? In the Bible, there is another term used that expresses the idea of purpose. The term is calling. And I really like that expression because the word purpose could be used of an inanimate object, a tool created to do something. But to be called requires a relationship. And the truth is that you cannot fulfill your purpose apart from your relationships. We saw that in the greatest commandment that I just read about. It has everything to do with relationships, loving God and loving others. So we discover our calling, our purpose, through our relationship with God. Calling also evokes, in my mind, the idea of a name. And names are important. They have meaning. When I was pregnant with my second son, Manny, and I'm sorry, boys, pastor's kids, we use you as examples. So here you go. I was pregnant with Manny, and this little girl came up to me at church one day. So cute. She said, what are you going to call your baby? And I said, we're gonna call him Emmanuel. She looked at me, nah, uh that's God's name. And I said, well, yeah, it's also the name of my baby. <laughs> but you know, she, she like knew Isaiah where it says he'll be called Emmanuel. <laughs> but in a way we are all called and asked to take on God's name. In the Bible, there are many examples of God changing someone's name. And it's very significant to what God was asking them, that person to be and to do. We see it first with a man named Abram. God changes his name from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And the weird part is when he changed his name, Abraham was really, really old and had no children. So how could he be the father of many nations? And yet God's promises and his calling on his life were fulfilled 
through Isaac and through the nation of Israel and through Jesus, ultimately. God called Jacob, whose name literally means deceiver, and he changed his name to Israel, and he became the patriarch of a nation. He called Joseph out of prison to become second in command of Egypt, where I am sure that he brewed his coffee. He called Moses, who spoke with a stutter, to be his mouthpiece to Pharaoh. He called Gideon, mighty warrior, when he was hiding in a corner. He called David, a teenage shepherd boy, to kill a giant and rule a nation. He called a little Hebrew girl, Esther, to be a queen and deliver her people from execution. He called another little Hebrew girl, Mary, to be the mother of Jesus and raise the Messiah. And during Jesus' ministry, Jesus called his disciples, fishermen and tax collectors, basically nobodies, to change the world forever. He called Simon, Peter, the rock, and he called Lazarus out of the grave. What is he calling you? One of the most dramatic renamings that we see in the Bible is Saul of Tarsus. Now Saul went around murdering and persecuting Christians. He hated them. And Jesus literally knocked him off his horse one day, changed his name to Paul. He sent him to bring the gospel to the ends of the known world and to write half the books of the New Testament. It really doesn't matter how we start. God can knock us off of our horses so that we can hear his call. And then we can truly live with purpose. Warning, another pregnancy story for you. When I was pregnant with our youngest, I was so very sick. I had hyperemesis and I had a Zofran pump that infused anti-nausea medicine 24-7 I had an IV in my home because I was so dehydrated and it was miserable. And I was so convinced that I was having a girl. I mean, I was so sick it had to be a girl, right? And I already had two boys, so the chances were pretty good. And I was so convinced that I had friends that were giving away baby clothes, girl baby clothes, and I was like, I'll take them, I'm gonna need them. And, um, then the day before our ultrasound, I heard this little voice, like a whisper in my heart that said, if it's a boy, you should name him Benjamin. And I was like, it is not a boy. But turns out it was. <laughs> and, uh, but I feel like that was the Holy Spirit like getting me ready so I didn't burst into tears in the ultrasound or something. But it was so profound to me, like I know it was the Lord telling me, okay, you're gonna name him Benjamin. So then later I thought, well, I should read about Benjamin in the Bible, because like I hadn't paid very much attention to that. And I really, it's, I really felt I learned a lot from the story of Benjamin. So I wanna share that with you today. So Benjamin was the youngest of 12 sons of Jacob, also called Israel. Jacob loved his wife, Rachel, so much, but she had a great deal of trouble having children. And there's this whole weird, messed up family situation with Rachel's sister, Leah, and some servant girls and all that equaling 12 sons, but we're gonna not talk about that today. But uh, anyhow, Rachel had one son, Joseph, who we have already established likes coffee. And now she was pregnant with another baby. But when she goes into labor, she has a very difficult time and she ends up dying in childbirth. So in Genesis 35, 18, we see her last words. Rachel was about to die, but with her last breath, she named her baby Ben-Oni, which means son of my sorrow. The baby's father, however, called him Benjamin which means son of my right hand. It's a very sad story because Rachel passes away, but you might feel like your past 
or your circumstances have named you son of my sorrows or daughter of my sorrows, son of failure, daughter of shame, son who is unwanted, daughter who is passed over, and all the other names that we pick up in this life. But you have a heavenly father who loves you and has his own name for you. Jacob changed his, name, his son's name to son of my right hand. There is another son who sits at the right hand of his father. And I wanna read about him in Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. These verses, they speak so strongly to our purpose. We keep our eyes on Jesus and we run the race set before us. What is God calling you to do? What purpose does he have for you? It all starts when we put our faith and trust in Jesus. Jesus came from heaven, fully God and fully man. He gave his life so that we can have life in him. Life in him, that's our purpose. I'd like everyone to just bow your heads, close your eyes, and just take a minute. Just spend a minute with the Lord. What is your purpose? In the next few moments, it's between you and God. If you want to have a relationship with God. If you want to understand and live out his calling for your life, let's say this prayer together. Father God, I've tried it my way and it's not working. I've tried to live out what I decided my purpose is and it's futile. Please forgive me. Thank you for sending Jesus to make a way for me. I put my faith in him. Thank you for calling me to follow you. Help me live out the purpose for which you created me. God, help us to live out our purpose. Help us each day to keep walking towards you and with you. Help us in our relationships to reflect your image to one another and to the world. Thank you, God. You are so, so very good. We love you. I really love to end the service with a song. And I asked the worship team to sing Jaira today. And it is, that's a name of God. It means God provides. And I just love the, where there's a part in the song where it says, I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. So as we sing that today, I just, just open your heart even more to God. He loves you. He has chosen you. And that's one of the great things about coming together as a church is we get to remember that together. We're chosen. We have purpose. Thank you, God. <laughs>